Okay, I'm gonna start working on the backgrounds for my Abandoned Places collage. And this is gonna be this one. I've picked three really dark colors. So these two are really dark and then a kind of a maroon to go in the back here. So let's just real quick, I'm gonna spray this to get some water on it. I'm going to put out some paint. And somebody asked me, this is distress paint, and somebody asked me if you can do this watery thing with um, regular paint. And um, I don't know because I'm actually working in my journal. And so I don't wanna really mess this up. <laughs> I'm willing to do lots for you, but I'm so sorry. I'm not willing to mess up my journal to see if regular acrylic paint can do this watery thing. Now I'm getting streaks. This is the Art by Marlene um, paper, which I've never wet, so I don't know. So if I didn't want streaks and I just wanted this to be plain, I could have probably put some gesso on it to uh to keep it more fluid as it were but i'm just kind of trying to get bits of color here and there and we're going to do this in two layers because i want to go back in let this dry a wee bit and once this distress paint is dry, it's going to stay like this. And then I can go on top of it and fin actually I can go on top of it right now and finish it up because I don't care if this part moves. And our train is down here, right? So I want this to be super dark for my train. And I do want it to be more dark than light. So this little light patch up here has got to go. This is going to be kind of a dark and brooding journal. Wait till you see what we do with the um, girl, the creepy girl who lives in the mansion. All right, so we've got a little bit of light still left there in case we want to... Um, you know, put a put a sun or something like that. I don't know what this is going to be yet, but we're going to lay this flat and move on to the next one. Okay, this one has a tag in it already for my creepy journal, for my creepy stuff. Um, let's think about the next one we're going to do, which I do think I want some blue, but not the, um, so let's do this one. And down here, I have, hang on, hang on. Down here, I have like this cobblestone uh, die that I'm gonna put down here, but I need some paint up here to be the blue at the top. And I don't want it to be dark skies. I want it to be more light skies with maybe a hint of whatever's left in this brush. All right, and I am here to tell you, I don't think this Art by Marlene paper is managing the, um, the water from the paint as well as um, Diane Ravely's Dilutions journals do. I feel like it's sucking it in. I am going to have to go, wait for this to dry. 
because this is way more purple than I want it to be, but I'm okay with that. I'm just building layers. Okay, so this, we have to wait for this side to dry. And while we're doing that, let's think about this one. And this one, I do want dark and broody. I want total thunderclouds and black and what is this color? Walnut stain. Oh, and the purple. And I think I have a black. Hold on. Hold hold on. You can't tell me I don't have a black of this open. Oh my goodness. Okay. This black is really watery. Um, there it is. I knew it. Try to fool me. This distress black is really, really watery. Um, which is fine. I don't care. It's just the the composition of this paint so I want it to be mostly black and then maybe a little bit of this this is called weathered wood which is like a light and then I'm going with purple so this is going to be a stormy skies background Little goober from the paint bottle. Okay. And once I've put this paint on and we've sealed it, then, oh look, I got goobers all over. That's awesome. Extra texture. All right, where'd my first one go? Here's my first one. This is dry now, mostly dry. Um, let's go into this with, I want some, um, You know how like there's streaks in the sky? So I want some streaks in the sky. And you don't have to use distress paint. I like distress paint but I will put the colors in the bottom. They, uh, yeah, I'll just put a list because there's a whole bunch of them I'm using. I'm not using the uh, walnut stain, just FYI. Too brown. I want black and purple and pink right now. So we're gonna let this dry. These are wet, hold on. Okay, not crispy dry, but a little dry. So let's do some kind of marks in the sky here. Maybe we do all of that for this. Grab a little bit of this paint. Grab a different paintbrush so we can get some of this light color in here. All right, this is this one. Let us make sure. Oh, I'm gonna put the cobblestones back here, so that's fine. And I am not a distress paint salesman, saleswoman, but the one thing that I love the most about it is it dries absolutely flat. You know how um, when you use acrylic paint, if you put a ton of it on, it like makes ridges and stuff. 
One of the weirdest properties to me about Distress Paint is that it dries absolutely flat. All right, so for this one, I think I'm gonna make like little squares up here. Maybe just around the edges, I think so. Let's see how we like it with that on there. Oh yeah. I like the little squares. All right, now I have to go work on my videos because these things have to be totally dry before we can um, glue anything down. So I will be back. Okay, so I'm thinking I might use this dye. I'm starting to collect things as I go with what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna be making a box for my um, Distress Embossing Glazes. But for right now, I want to do some embossing on the backgrounds of these. And I have picked my Distress Wilted Violet and Distress, oh my gosh, Villainous Potions. Very hard to see. So, let's grab my box and we're gonna find some cool things to distress with. I kind of feel like this is the jam I'm going for, right? Like more, oh, here's some letters, some like writing. I don't think I want anything big right this second. I might move to big. That could be good. Okay, I think I have plenty. Ugh! I have decided that if I don't use my stamps and dies, then I can't keep them. So we're gonna be using them. Okay, so this is what's going on on this page, is this gal. So I want some stuff in the background. I think I'm gonna start with this one. And the cool thing about these is it's an acrylic plate and then I keep my dies on the back so you can, um, you can see that video, which is very cool. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do just some Versamark here and there. Put the Versamark on. And then we're going to put some, let's go with the darkest kind first. This is the Villainous Potion. And just get some of that in the back. Let's go ahead and emboss it and then we'll put some more on. And the cool thing about this kind of embossing is it's translucent. All of the Distress Embossing Powders are translucent. So you're gonna start to see layers and layers and layers of stuff. But what I wanna do is I wanna get it over here and get it over here. So we are gonna use the same stamp. Oops. Ugh. And do some over here and some over here. All right. And this is my embossing tray. If I had to say one thing that was $7 that has changed my life, it's a $7 embossing tray. That's cool. And I also feel like I want a teeny bit more up here. Let's see if there's any Versamark left on this. Oh, yep, I see some on there. And I've tried lots of embossing liquid and I just like the Versamark the best. No offense to anybody else. Okay, and we are going to emboss this. All right. So I love how that turned out. And the beauty of this is you take your embossing powder jar 
and you take your little tray and you just dump it right back in. And if you cannot, um, if you're out of the country especially and you cannot get this little embossing tray, you can absolutely do the same thing with a piece of typing paper. But I truly do love my $7 embossing tray. All right, next we're going to do a um, this wilted violet. And we're going to pick a different... I have too much stuff on my desk. We are going to pick a different stamp. And I think I'm going to pick this one that looks kind of like an old-fashioned label. And somewhere along the line, I got this Wicked Cool acrylic block. But I am totally a um, marketing gal, so business stamps make me happy. So we're going to do this. And this is a railroad stamp, and I'm gonna put it kind of here, and here, and here, and here. And I don't care if it's straight, and I don't care if it's perfect. And then we're gonna get our tray back. Banging it out scares the little dog. All right, this is new. This is part of the new colors we got six new embossing colors and i am thrilled so excited because i love these embossing glazes now this looks kind of right here but i promise you what will happen because it is um translucent it's going to fade more with just maybe a little bit of color i don't even know how much color is going to show all right that's just perfect it doesn't necessarily even look like a color it just looks lighter than the dark purple and so let's put this away Okay, into my embossing box, or over there for right this second. And now I am going to start sticking these down so they don't get hurt, right? Like one of my main goals is to get stuff stuck down. And this is going to be this gal. Do we want her? Oh, well, we're gonna have to put her, we could put her this way. I think we put her that way. What do you, I do, okay. I'm gonna use doo -doo -doo, Nouveau Glue, which is what I use on my magazine collages. It does an amazing job of sticking and it doesn't, um, it doesn't clog its nozzle as Tim Holt said. I'm super excited for this project. This is the first time in a while that magazine collage has, has seemed different. And there's a gal that watches my channel called Michelle O'Dell who sent in a bunch of her designs that were done with this abandoned paper and I have to say, that sounds like total fun. All right. And we are gonna have to give this a minute to set. So we are gonna let this dry for a minute. And move on to the next one. So next, oh gosh, it's the back of this one, okay? So this one is this red one. I love this. This is very cool. And we're going to do some kind of um, embossed pattern down here. But up here, I want to start to get some of those same. So let's go to the other stuff. We're going to do this. Versamark. And then um, 
like a really pretty blue. This is amazing, Broken China. And I love that one. Okay, so we're gonna do Broken China, kind of down the page. Get our embossing tray. And I don't worry overly much about mixing my embossing glazes. If you care about that kind of thing, you should clean out your tray better than I do. All right, do we see any more over here? Oh, we do. Oh my goodness, quite a bit more. Jeez Louise. I knew a lady named Louise Cheese and I just can't get it out of my head. All right, that is cool. And now we are going to do, I think this time, we are going to do this kind of tickety thing. And we're going to go back to the dark purple. Oops, it's upside down. I do kind of like my stuff to be right side up. So we're gonna come right in here with this, boop. And then over here, and then maybe re-ink and do over here. I don't know how much of that you'll see. I gotta put this away. All right, now we're gonna put the dark purple on, which I just so happen to know is Villainous Potion, but I don't know all the names of Tim Holtz's colors. how pretty that is. Now I could have mixed that with the lighter purple, but then what happens is you can't put the um, embossing powder back. And I do like to keep as much of my embossing powder as I can. But for little tiny bottles, I have to say, I have used my embossing powders a lot over the years and I have, I think one. Oh, it's the pink because I dropped it, boy. But the rest of them, they last a super long time. All right, I'm gonna emboss this. Okay, now this may not be exactly ready because we need the thing on the bottom, but I am gonna glue the top part of this down here so like halfway down, because if I can get this in my journal, it will stand a lot less chance of getting ruined than if it's just floating around in my desk because my desk is always a nightmare. So let's get this top part stuck down and then we can stick the cobblestones underneath later. think like that. There we go. Get this nice and stuck down. All right. Now these gals, I've got to do her feet. So her feet don't get hurt. Now the gal on the the bottom, her feet are not connected right now. So she does have a chance of getting hurt, but I will tell you, she has a million times less chance of getting hurt than if I left her floating around my desk. All right, last but not least, let's do, oh, this one is gorgeous. Just so pretty. Okay, I want this bright pink. And I think this bright blue, I don't think I wanna go dark on this. It, it will still be dark because of the background, but let's do that first um, really close together stuff, really close together script. Johnny's mocking me because I've lost my words because of stress. So I no longer have all the words I used to have. 
I'm sure they'll come back eventually. And we're gonna do that in pink. Oh, this isn't open. We're gonna do that in blue. Oh my goodness, that's funny. Honestly, that's often how I pick colors, whatever's open. I don't know if you're a big embosser, but embossing um, powder is functionally just melted, is plastic, little tiny pieces of plastic that you melt when you heat it with your embossing gun. I don't show it very often. I do have a bit video about heat embossing, so you can watch that if you'd like. Okay, and if you're wondering why, if I put blue down, it looks purple or dark. Oh my gosh, I see a part that did not get, I see a couple parts that didn't get melted. See how it still looks blue? That's because, um, Embossing glaze is translucent, so you can see through it. So if I can still see blue, I know it's not melted. Okay. All right, that's the end of this blue for today. So let's put it away. And I have to open up that pink. I am really not... Look at me. Oh, look, I was very good at opening that up. I say it as if that was true. Okay, so let's take this off of here. And while we have this kind of little bit out, let's do the um, map because that's easy. I'm not, so one of the things that, that happens is as you do more and more collages, you will realize that nobody is looking at the background, right? Like we have a really cool um, train in the foreground and I'm gonna have lots of doodles and maybe some words and things like that. So nobody is gonna be looking at the back of your picture and thinking, ooh, I wonder what that stamp in the background is in that really weird voice. Okay, this is brand new, I just got this because I dumped my flamingo pink embossing powder on the floor one day. There we go. There's one over here. Let's see if there's any anywhere else. Just put it all out, because it doesn't matter. You're just gonna pour it back in the jar. Okay, that's all we got. Nice. Does this need some more, or was it just running out? Okay, and then let's do a couple of little psh, 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 splotches here and there. That will just melt all together. Okay. Let's put this away. So the time that you have to be worried about is embossing medium, the stuff you put on, like the stamp pad, uh, is the stuff you have to worry about the time, okay? So once you put that on, you have to get the powder onto your project. Once you have the powder on the embossing medium, you can leave that all day, you could leave it till tomorrow wouldn't make any bit of difference because it's just gonna sit there until you heat it or until you rub it. If you rubbed it, it would go away too. And some of the stuff that I didn't have with embossing powder will blow away, but I don't mind. Now, I showed you a little bit, but you can avoid having your little blobbies of embossing powder blow away by heating them from underneath. So we have to give this just one second to dry. Let's put away my stamps. Let's put away my stamp block. Okay, that's probably dry enough. And let's glue this down, and then I'm done until that glue is really super, super set. And tomorrow I will probably um, 
pull out my, um, I bought that Sizzix switch and I need it for the embossing of the cobblestone. So I will probably pull that out tomorrow. I had a little bit to do today. I had to go out and I had to go see my mother-in-law at the nursing home and I had some running around to do. I had to take my taxes to the post office. So tomorrow I have time to blow up my office and figure out where my switch is gonna go because I don't have a ton of room for it, but that's fine. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put this down on there because I know that, that I want this train to be on that side. And then we're gonna push everything up from here. We want our bird to be beautiful. And I might outline all this stuff in black today, but our next step is gonna be doing the bottom for this one. So I'll be back. Okay, it is Saturday morning and we are making art. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to do here was do more mixed media meaning more different kinds of things. And I was thinking I was gonna do, um, I'm making that circle because it is, I can't remember what it's called right now, like embossing through a machine. And I have a machine, I'm gonna use it on Monday. But the problem was for me is I'm not gonna be able to do that for this bottom part, which is holding me up a lot. So what I'm gonna do instead, and this is fun, Oh, could we do it on here? Oh, I have enough of these little pieces. I'm going to do it on here. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, Desi's up. Yay, Desi. Okay, I think there's one more. There we go. So I've got some cool stuff here that is just neat um, things. And I was almost going to, is that you, Desi? No? Okay. They creep around like little spiders. Um, I was almost going to paint some stuff in there, but this is, especially since I have all that in the background, I feel like this is going to be super fun to doodle in like a dark color. All right, I'm going to lift this up. Put this down here. I just want to get it all the way to the edges and I can cut off those extra. Oh, look how nicely that pops her. Okay, where's the other one? This is a really good piece. Oh, fun. Let's put a piece in the middle I like. How about that one? Oh, that's a good one. So what I wanted to talk to you this morning about is stopping your work until you have the perfect solution. So I was kind of stopping doing what I was gonna do until I got all of that, um, until I got my new switch machine out and figured it out and then did that special embossing and then got the right color. And I'm telling you, I have um, been stressing myself out about it. And I hate that, you know, art is supposed to be fun. So that's why when I got up this morning, I was like, you know what? That is going to be an art supply for another day. And we are going to move forward on this one. And I find this to be super exciting because I am gonna doodle this while I watched Tim Holtz today. I love watching Tim Holtz. He is so fun. Okay, so I love how that kind of split this into two and grounded it, but I feel like I'm unhappy with how straight this line is, and I know one way I can make not a straight line. Okay, let's talk about tearing things. If you tear down, the white part of the line is on the back, right? 
I want the white part of the line to be on the front so that I can um, ink it or use it as a thing. So I am going to tear up in a relatively straight line. I don't want it to be perfectly straight. In fact, the less straight, the better I will feel. And I am going to do that. Oh, I glued her. That's okay. Don't, no worries. We're not gonna be worried. This is a mixed media project. So we are going to have layers and layers and layers of stuff. And I actually love that I will still get to have the stairs over there. And then I do think I'm gonna cut this with not my good scissors. Oh, these are really bad scissors. I'm gonna cut this kind of along the line of her leg, maybe even a little shorter. Oh, I love that, okay. Now, because I have that, so I really have to goo on my scissors. I used them for that fabric tape. I am going to make this cut also hyper, big and kind of leave her leg out there. And, and I'm putting a lot of thought into this right this second, but in two seconds, I'm not gonna care a whit about it because this is such a small thing in this whole piece that it's not gonna make a difference to anybody but me and thee, because they won't even notice that. Okay, is this stuck down, this edge? I did not think so. So we are gonna get this edge really stuck down. Okay. And it's a little tippy, although this top part is straight. This was tipping down, but it'll be fine. Okay, I love where this is going. I love her. Yeah, I'm gonna be doodling today. I'm super excited. And I'm super excited I didn't let, um, people call it perfectionism. I call it um, stubbornness and wanting to have, ex all right, I'm getting my good scissors out and this is how we have not nice scissors, right? Okay. Yep, just got glue on my good scissors. Okay, so I'm gonna work on these this afternoon and I will show you the final versions of them later. Oh, here's the last one, there's one more. Oh, the bird. I just love this. Okay, so I'm going to doodle and I will be back. Okay, so. These aren't the kind of pages that are gonna be all done in a minute because I am going to, oh, I forgot I did this girl. These two girls, those are going to, I gotta take them out because I think Susie Allen picked this one, um, but I'm gonna send these, one of these to Susie Allen. And then, oh, this isn't the right size journal. I need the other size journal. Dope, 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 dope. Okay, this is what happens when you have too many, oh, I don't think too many journals is a thing. Okay, so here we go. I have created a problem for myself in that I papered over these holes. So there is a hole in there somewhere. Let's see if we can see, I can see the edges of it. Now, I, don't really care if the hole is holy, but that's hard to see with. Where is Cropodile? So I have a Cropodile that is amazing at making holes and you can look down through it. This is it. So we gotta make sure. So there's a little slidey slidey. Where's the slidey slidey? Oh, maybe 
maybe it all works all the time. This one all works all the time. Okay, so see that hole right there? It's gonna do it, but there's a hole in the top that I can actually see through. I don't know if I can do this so you can see it, but I can actually see through it to punch that hole. And then we're gonna hope that was right. And if it wasn't, is it the end of the world? No, it is not the end of the world. It's just an art journal. Oh, that worked out fine. Okay, so we have these guys ready to go. My next step is going to be to do, I just ordered a whole bunch of Tim Holtz ephemera. So I may do some more of these backgrounds because I really kind of love how this turned out. But I'm going to be adding a ton of ephemera, and where's that tag? There's a tag that goes in here. So I'm going to be adding ephemera and all kinds of fun stuff to this one. But this is the bird. I outlined him and his train. I didn't outline his toesies yet because I didn't know if I wanted to do that. And then these gals, I outlined these gals, her hands. I left this. It looks like that's coming up. When you've done enough magazine collage, you can look at, oh gosh, I left my fabric glue open. Why do I have to be so bad at glue? Um, when you've done enough magazine collage, you can tell when something isn't stuck down. Okay, we're gonna stick that down. Boop, boop, boop. And stick. Um, so what I was thinking was we're going to put collage on and then I'm going to do dark embossing down here once I get the collage on. And then this is the other page. I feel like these are coming apart. Oh, you know why these are coming apart? Because there is a, there is a, um, opening right there, but this side isn't sticking to the opening. So let's slap a little glue on here. And then once you're gone, I'll put something heavy on it to, to stick it down. And I kind of love this one. This one is kind of my, um, my little slice of heaven with dark purple. I'm really into dark purple since Tim Holtz came out with that villainous potion. And so all the dark purple then contrasting with the kind of green, green chartreuse and purple are my, and magenta are my favorite color combination in the world. So this makes my heart happy. So I outlined the house. I outlined her glasses. There still feels like there's some, this tiny little thing right there will not stick down. I've glued it like six times. So, all right, this was in the Art by Marlene journal and I am done with these abandoned pages for now. Hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life. Come here, you know you have a friend named Lisa who likes to see you. There's Kitty.